I, 30 female, caught my husband, 31 male, in an affair and I don't know how to move on. I thought things had been going on for a while, but kept putting it off. I believed he would never do that to me. He's been fighting my attempts most of the time since approximately April, sitting differently on the couch so that he's facing away from me, little things. It's with one of our long-term buddies. She paid me a visit a few weeks ago. She sent me an SMS. She's professed to care about me. I noticed it when I rolled over and saw them having a Snapchat debate. He stated that I attempted to seduce him last night and ridicule it, and she said she hoped she could be there to hug him. When I confronted him, he admitted it. He replied that it was due to the stress of quarantine. He is hesitant to work things out. He views me simply as a passionate buddy. When I notified her husband, he confronted her, and they apparently kissed in February. I don't feel I was ever going to be enough for him. At that moment, we used to be thrilled. We spent Valentine's Day together the week before they kissed, so it was a special occasion. For our anniversary, he surprised us with a fantastic bottle of wine. I thought we had a great time and that we were fantastic. I'm completely at a loss on what to do next. After just about a year of marriage, we're still getting to know one another. I feel like he has taken so much away from me and refuses to seek counseling or otherwise resolve the situation. I don't want to leave my house, yet I can't help but see him everywhere. He had a preference for her. The majority of the relationships I've been in have had some kind of betrayal. He was supposed to be the one and only person in my life. I'm completely at a loss on what to do. Despite the fact that I was laid off last month, I have much too much free time to go over every single occasion in which he may have lied to me or in which I made myself unhappy by clinging to him. What is the best method for me to begin to work my way through this? Story 2. Ex-wife left for AP and returned after 10 years and asked to take her back in my life. My ex-wife, 35 female, my next-door neighbor app, and my next-door neighbor's wife, 37 female, all referred to her by the initials X my wife, and I tie the knot in 2009. Our first kid was born in the year 2010. In November of 2010, when she was sleeping, a message appeared on her phone. When I examined her phone, I discovered that the call had come from our next-door neighbor. Every single correspondence, which included flirting, trading nudes, and even arranged hotel meetups, was read out to me by my colleagues. We've been having this conversation since the first week of our marriage. My whole universe seemed to collapse in front of me. On my phone, I took screenshots of every communication I received. The next day, I called M and told her of the relationship's end. Our neighbors had just been married for four years when we met them, and they had their first kid about the same time as us. I went to my wife and told her that I was divorcing her. She was shocked and upset. I was completely oblivious to the fact that she was crying and everything. My wife and I also conducted a paternity test on our child, son, since our relationship's chronology corresponded with the date of conception. X was unable to be found when I returned home from work after two days. Our child was weeping in our bed when I arrived home from work. A message from her appeared, in which she expressed her disinterest in me, said that she had left with AP, and instructed me not to contact them. I was aware that it was going to happen, but I couldn't believe that a mother would desert her child who was roughly six months old at the time, and moved with her lover to another country. Following that, I went to M's place of living. Her husband had also sent her a letter, which she had received. My heart went out to her since she was suffering from postpartum depression, having just recently given birth to her child a few months prior, and was all by herself. In addition, the results of the paternity test revealed that he was really my son. In an effort, I sought to contact X's family, but they too, were unaware of her whereabouts and were taken aback by her behavior. If she came back, her father even threatened her with the fact that she would not be allowed to enter their house. It was as though they had disowned her. Elle was quite helpful. In the beginning, she would come over to my place to watch the kids and even breast both of them, her and mine. Over time, we became like family to one other. My tiny child called her as mom and had only ever known her in that capacity. In addition, we made the choice to go on date nights. Our engagement was announced a year later, and we were married in 2013. We became parents for the first time in 2015. It was common for us to talk about our ex-partners and how we were constantly insulted by them. In our conversations, we were a happy family. Our decision to tell our child that her biological mother ex had died in a car accident years before and that her grandmother, Elle, had been caring for him 
since he was six months old, was based on the fact that she had unintentionally seen a photo of mine ex, taken after delivery, so it featured X, me, and him, in 2018. Two days ago, I got an anonymous email message. When I opened it, it stated, I want to see my kid and regain my family. I thought it was really cool. We haven't ended up in a divorce yet. I had a feeling it had to be X this was shown to LL started to panic and asked me to take her back to the hospital. When she became upset, I reassured her that she had a troubled past and that I would never forsake her. I'd never give her back to her family. I'm at lost on what to do at this point, but although I'm not going to welcome her return, should I allow her to meet my son? Whether or if I should take advantage of my son's opportunity to meet with her biological mother is up to me. Update. So let us begin by declaring that we did not need the services of a court or an attorney. According to some of you, since she abandoned us many years ago, she would have no legal parental rights over my child. To double-check this story, I found a legal friend who confirmed that she might face a significant fine, the loss of parental rights, and even jail time if she is found to be responsible. I told him of the length of time that I had been abandoned and questioned as to my chances of success in my particular situation. If a parent does not have physical contact with his or her child for more than a year, he or she will almost likely lose parental rights, he or she told me. The comfort I felt as soon as those words were said came from somewhere deep within me. I also enrolled my child in counseling in order to be able to tell him the truth about his biological mother and father. When she contacted me after 10 years, I was curious as to why she had contacted me, so I inquired of her father, who is still a close friend of mine and offers me with excellent advice, as to whether X had contacted his family. It comes out that she had been contacting her sister for financial assistance on and off for the last 10 years, but her sister is no longer willing to aid her since she was asking for a bit more money than she had previously requested. I wanted to know about her issues and whether or not exposing her to my kid would be a good choice in the long run. According to him, she only has a minimum wage job and lives in a small flat with three other people. After hearing him say this, I felt terrible for her, but she deserved it all the same. He said that she would have a bad influence on our child and that it would be better if we did not expose him to X in any way. After that, I called her sister and interrogated her about their conversations over the preceding 10 years, which she confirmed. She told me all she knew about me. How X only contacted her for money because she had no money left over after paying her rent, food, and other utilities, and she was desperate for money. X never inquired on my child. He was just interested in money. AP and X are connected, she said when I inquired about the relationship. She stated that X had been in prison for assault since 2015. This news made me happy for some reason that I can't put my finger on. Asked if X was aware of the divorce, I received a negative response. She claims that X is completely uninformed of the divorce and continues to assume that we are still legally married to one another. I pushed her to tell X what she had learned, divorce, child custody, my new family, and the fact that she has no right to my kid. X's behavior was a complete surprise to M, who was shocked by my disclosure. She had no clue that a mother could be so heartless to her own child until she saw it. When she first learned about AP, she was taken aback. We've been waiting for X to respond for almost 30 days now. Family counseling is going well, and we've decided to adopt each other's children in a legal adoption ceremony. I doubt that X would contact since her sister may have told her of her legal situation and that hiring an attorney would be a waste of money, thus I doubt she would contact.